Hi guys and welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. Today we're back at Elodine Lakes. We were planning to film a Christmas special episode, but due to the storm arrowing, it's not going to be possible. No, but what that does give us is the perfect opportunity to do a video I've been planning for a while now. A while ago I had a comment on one of the videos saying it's all well and good catching when the weather's on your side and the fish are feeding, but what happens when you turn up to the fishery on a difficult day? Well today we've got 60 mile an hour winds, it's going to be one degree at its warmest and the fishery hasn't been stopped for a while. So everything's against us, but I'm pretty sure we're still going to catch some fish. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, but that's the whole point of this episode is to show you what we would do in these situations. Well guys, a few tips for me while Lloyd's out there catching fish in the cold. Firstly, we're going to talk about gear. We're going to be wanting to use a 10 foot 7 or 8 rate rod. This is going to help you cut through the wind. Uh, it's 40 miles plus today and it's just crazy out there. So there's a few tips you can do. You can go down to a single fly. It's going to stop you getting tangles with your dropper. It's going to make things a lot more enjoyable for you. We're going to strengthen the leader. We're going to be using 8 or 10 pound leader and we're going to shorten the leader. It's just going to help your cast turn over a lot more easy and the wind's going to affect you less. A few tips there that are going to help you catch more fish. So there we are. It was a nice little morning for us, four fish for me. Uh, we started on Lake Moor at the back with the wind blowing into that area there. Any food that comes off the trees or you know, is in the water, it will push down into that little bay there so the fish will hold around in that little bay. So I knew we would be working up there. And it's one of the reasons I chose the indicator method as well, because of the waves, I said they're about three centimeter tall waves. So that indicator is gonna sit on top of the wave and bounce up and down about three centimeters. And of course the fly then below it is gonna move up and down three centimeters. So any fish in that vicinity is gonna be able to see that fly, especially with the, the trout and cheese one. Um, using the, again, using the wind to my advantage, just letting it drift through the water, trying to keep the, uh, the line as straight as I can and just, just watching for any any unnatural movements of that indicator when it's going up and down, you know, if it dips before it starts to go up the, uh, up the back of the, the wave, then you know there's something interested in to sort of get ready for it. So the, the, the main thing is really just to, to wrap up warm, you know, wear coats, hats, scarves, that sort of thing, keep yourself warm. Take five minutes to yourself to go inside and have a cup of tea. Well guys, after that cup of tea, I decided to head back out and put on the mini cutthroat zonker. As you can see, I've headed to the top of Lake Moor. This time I'm casting with the wind behind me, and that's a good tip. When it's windy, um, especially when it's sort of 10 to 20 miles an hour wind, you can cast with the wind behind you, and that's going to add distance to your cast. Now that's important because on days like today when the food's being blown away from the bank, the fish are going to hold out that much deeper, so adding that little bit of distance will often see you catching more fish. Another thing I like to do is speed up my retrieve when I'm pulling it back through the current. This creates a lot of disturbance and the uh, fly is moving in an unnatural direction which can often trigger this fish's interest and that can often trigger a take. And as you can see here, it's resulted in another fish. That's one fish I wouldn't have caught unless I tried fishing from this bank and it proves that they will follow it in from quite a distance out before taking. So one of the main advantages of fishing the indicator in weather like this is that your flies stay in the water for a longer period of time, meaning the fish have more of a chance of seeing them and interacting with them and possibly taking the fly. Another advantage is less casting. Less time casting means less knots, less tangles, less foul hooking the bank or even yourself. Right guys, another thing you've got to remember is after a big storm, the fish are going to be quite close into the margins. That's for two reasons. One, all the rain we had last night is going to push any terrestrial life into the water and deposit them sort of two or three foot into the uh, lake itself. And then the second reason is the wind direction. So the wind's going to be blowing any food that's already in the water into the furthest bank uh, and that's where you want to be getting your flies.
there we are. Sort of proves, uh, proves this method works. That's the same tactics. Standing on the, uh, the right hand side of the wind, coming down, casting it out, and letting it drift towards that bank. And that's where all the food is being pushed to. So all the fish are going to be in this swim here. Again, different lake, same tactics, same depth, and the same fly. So the method really, really works. Well guys, it's around that dull hour. It's sort of one o'clock in the afternoon now. Most fisheries around this time do go quiet. The fish come off to feed and it gets a little bit harder to catch. So I put on the Rainbow Flash Damsel, one of my fail saves that catches me everywhere I go. And lo and behold, on the way back to the lodge to get a nice warm cup of tea, Lloyd said, let's have one more cast. And I hooked into this stunning fish. So these are my top three go-to flies for fishing indicators in the winter. Coming in at number three would be the squirmy worm in either a phosphor or an earthworm colour. In at number two is the brandling worm, uh, another worm because they have a lot of movement so when they're moving down with the waves it does create a lot of movement under the water. And in the number one place would be eggs, uh, my personal favourite is the trout and cheese. So if, like me, you'd prefer to be stripping back lures, these are the top three flies that I'd be using this winter. I go for one black, one olive, and one white. Uh, so for my olive fly, I'd go for the Rainbow Flash Damsel. My white fly would be the Incredible Cat. And then my black fly would either be uh, the Black Mamba or a Black Humongous. So after lunch, I set up with the Humongous and I came back to the top of Lake Moor, but I wanted to move. Now, a quick tip here is when you want to move, make sure to cast your line out as far as possible and reel it back onto the spool. Now, the reason for this is twofold. One, it's going to lay a lot neater when you reel it in. But more importantly, it's going to let you know if the fish want it extremely fast on a day. And as you can see here, it can often lead to a few extra fish. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to put on the black mamba. Let's have a guess in the comment section on how many casts you think it will take for me to land a fish. I'm going to go ahead and guess six, and we'll see who's right at the end of the video. Oh, missed one then, put the black mamba on. Yes, you got it! Oh, it's a nice fish. <laughs> missed him and he came back. Put the black mamba on. I don't know if the camera picked it up, but guess how many casts? I guessed six. Took me two casts and I put it into a lovely spark. It's what the black mamba does, it's why we've designed it. Hopefully we get to land it and have a look at this stunning fish. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I finally enjoyed. Did you have a good day, Lloyd? Yeah, it's been quite fun, hasn't it? You know, considering the conditions, uh, we still had a, had, a, had a good laugh. I mean, we just spoke to uh, the guy here now working, and he said everyone else is blank. So ten fish is a good, good uh, showing, I think. Yeah, it's good. Goes to show you, you know, if, if you want the numbers, you uh, you can use the indicator, or if you if you want the specimens, you've got to use the lures and the, the black mamba, yeah, especially. Black mamba, especially that Spartic to finish the day on. Yeah, great way to end the video. Can't get any better than that. Yeah, all that's left to do is say thanks for watching. We hope you picked up some tips and we'll see you in the next video.